So, what's the point of all that? What were they doing with you? Why were you emotional about it? I was, we were down on the ground where we were obviously at risk covering the protesters, and we ended up getting in the middle of it when the police decided that they wanted them off the streets and shoved them onto the sidewalks. <clears throat> we decided to put this up because I think it shows a different side to Occupy Wall Street. When I went, before I went to Occupy Wall Street, I thought that these people were violent. I mean, that's what I saw on news. I mean, these people are horrible. You read all these things that they're raping women, they're violent with the police officers. But when I went there, these people were so kind and they were not violent at all. It was the police officers that were the aggressive ones. They were the ones instigating the violence. And although that, that doesn't that doesn't follow the narrative of maybe people who, the narrative that people who read our, our, our website would like to hear, it was something that was happening, that these people aren't as violent as people are making them out to be, that they're actually quite kind and they helped me up. And also I think it's interesting that the guy says let's put this on Facebook because it shows that with this new, this new internet, internet world, one voice, my voice, anyone's voice, can be just as loud as the New York Times or the Washington Post. You can just put a video up on the internet and it's distributed globally. What had happened to you? You're right in the middle of that. We can see you there. Yes. Um, and you're down on the ground at some point. How did that happen? I mean, who, who was pushing you down? The police officers. I, my camera girl and I were in front of the protesters as they were marching down the street and we were getting uh, footage of them marching down and at that moment the police officers decided oh, okay well we don't want them on the street anymore let's just shove them back into the park and um, so they came up they came with batons and I ended up just getting in the, in, in the middle of it because I couldn't move there was a car in front of me and there were cops around me and protesters and they wanted us to get on the sidewalks but the sidewalks were completely filled with people so there was nowhere for me to move so the police officer hit me in the back with a baton and I fell onto the car, fell to the ground and I got back up and I think, it, I'm not sure if it was the same police officer but I got hit back down again. There's a still picture of you where you are right down on the ground in the middle and um, I think that actually, I think I first saw that uh, tweeted out. Yes. Who, who, who tweeted the picture out? I tweeted the picture out. I was instantly, um, it went up on the Daily Mail and uh, my boyfriend called me and said, hey, you know, you're, you're, are you okay? I saw this photo on the Daily Mail and uh, I just got it off the Daily Mail's website. You're talking about the London Daily Mail? Yes. And I tweeted it out and then people started retweeting it all over. Explain the tweeting, retweeting <laughs> and all that to someone that says, oh, I don't know any of that stuff. What so, is it? it? Okay, so you can write, I think there's, there are only a certain amount of characters. That 140. You can, 140, yes. And so you just write sentences, uh, 
quick snarky sent, uh, sentences or comments or you tweet out a uh, article and then that shows up on the people who are following you. So people follow your account and that what you tweet goes on their account and they can read that. Do you, do you feel the, the, a, a power when you're able to do this? I feel as though Twitter and Facebook have enabled people who maybe don't, are not in the media, they don't have a loud voice to become one of the loudest voices in media. I mean, we see